It was a valiant fight from Jason Rogers, but unfortunately he did not manage to medal. I'm Andre Huey coming to you from Lima, Peru for the Pan Am Games 2019, where Jason Rogers for St. Kitts Nevis ran in the 100 meter finals. He finished at seventh place with a time of 10.40 seconds. He led the race up to 60, but just fell away just before the race ended. Uh, the race eventually was won by Michael Rogers of the United States with a time of 10.09, followed by Andre Camillo de Oliveira with a time of 10.16. And uh, third place going to a Caribbean athlete, Antiguan Barbuda CJ Green, with a time of 10.23. We spoke to Jason Rogers after the, the race. Obviously, he was disappointed, but he was pleased with the effort he gave. I'm actually feeling good. You know, I came out, I gave it my best shot. Well, not my best shot, but I tried my best to execute and put the race together, but it just didn't happen. I mean, I came up against a very good feel despite the circumstance. and. I tried and I'm just thankful that I finished injury free, thankful for all the support and I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be here and represent the Federation. In the past my first race would actually be like very slow but my body has responded um, very good for the first race out here um, because of the level of competition so I mean going forward is a good look despite the seventh place finish. It's a good look for the future, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, what's next? I'm not sure. I've got to talk to coach, see if we're going to keep running or shut down the season and focus on next season. So left to see what he has in store. So there you have it there, Jason Rogers of St. Kitts Nevis, uh, finishing seventh place with a time of 10.40 in the men's 100 meter finals. St. Kitts and Nevis has one more chance for a medal. It will be Jermaine Francis. He'll be competing in the high jump semifinals on Friday, August 9th. And uh, from all accounts from his coach, he is looking good going into that event. We'll see what will come of that. Of course, this is his first Pan American Games. And I just need to note this, of course, that the Pan American 100 meter records in the men's 100 meters uh, is owned by our very own Kim Collins. He ran that time of 10 seconds flat in Guadalajara, Mexico, back in 2011. Coming to you from Lima, Peru, for the Pan American Games, I'm Andre Huey. St. Kitts and Nevis caused an explosion at the Curry Festa 14 Grand Market with their country night production, aptly titled Volcanic Eruption. The high energy cultural performance triggered seismic activity that left Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the region shaking, not out of fear, but out of an appreciation of the wealth of the Federation's history and heritage. The build up to the eruption featured a lava flow with the rumblings of the drums. The same rhythmic beats punctuated the delivery of the spoken word a cultural dance and drama. The flute's high shrieks was a call to the masquerades who continued to corral the attention of patrons to the grand market. King Craig showed his skill with Calypso and Soka, and when he crooned out the timeless piece, You Looking for Horn, there was a sense of increased seismic activity and several lava flows were snaking their way through the enraptured audience. During his presentation, the audience was officially introduced to our national wear and another major cultural feature of St. Kitts and Nevis, the bull. Queen Independent was introduced on stage after and her vocals, blended with the horns and the steel pan, sent plumes of smoke and ash into the air, signs of the imminent eruption. Soka star Deli Ranks burst onto the stage and rumblings were more pronounced. His presence triggered increased activity in the volcanic cultural cone. By the time the masquerades joined him on stage, and the tempo of the music increased, there was an implosion as kitchens and divisions converged around the stage. Lucas H.E., another soccer star, took to the stage and the energy of the presentation could only be described as magma bursting into the air. There was no denying the cultural explosion. The soccer artists then combined and the eruption was in full force as the energy, vibes and infectious spirit of St. Kitts and Nevis culture spewed all over the grand market. I have looked at the performances of some of the other countries. It was good, but this had a nice vibe to it, a really good vibe. Not, not just reminiscent, it wasn't reminiscent of our carnival, but there was an originality that was significant to St. Kitts and Nevis. We felt St. Kitts and Nevis here today. You guys' presentation to us, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I mean, I get to see your minister, see your permanent secretary, there with you guys. 
need you guys leave your post and come on stage and support the artists. Absolutely beautiful, bountiful show. The power and magnitude of the eruption engulfed everything in its wake. This was evident as crowded Peters of Antigua and Barbuda joined the performers on stage for a brief dance cameo. Calypso Craig returned onto the stage in what appeared to be some respite for the heated audience with a soothing medley featuring God Bless Our Country, Nevis Nice and Viva St. Kitts. However, just when patrons thought the eruption was over, Lucas H.E. and Delhi Ranks returned and caused another massive eruption. The energy, vibes and captivating powers of St. Kitts and Nevis's country night performance was evident and as geologists say in the wake of an eruption, the Carifesta landscape was transformed. St. Kitts and Nevis brought rags, flags and bags with souvenirs and other paraphernalia and four lucky patrons won tickets to the National Carnival, Nevis Culturama and St. Kitts Music Festival. The contingent left an indelible mark on the regional super stage with a well-organized production. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education Sean Richards has suggested satisfactory performance in this year's CXC examinations. Speaking at a 15th August press conference at the OTI, Education Minister Richards presented the preliminary results that included CAPE and CSEC examinations. Just in the CSEC alone, the preliminary results indicate an over 80% mark of acceptable passes. We are certain to have quite a few smiling faces today based on what we have seen to date. CAPE students access their results on Tuesday, August 13th and CCSLC yesterday. CSEC results. Within the Federation, 1,661 candidates wrote 5,339 subjects. Of that amount, 354 candidates sat exams in Nevis and 1,307 candidates wrote exams in St. Kitts, of which 752 were school candidates and 909 were private. Of the 500, of the 5,339 subject entries, 4,271 were school candidates and 1,068 from private. Acceptable grades returned, that is grades one to three, were 4,291. Of that amount, schools returned 3,565 and 726 for private for a national pass rate based on the preliminary results for CSEC 2019 of 80.37%. Most students in the Federation would have accessed the results through the CXC online portal. Glenn Berg for SKN Newsline. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're fully covered after an accident. The security of your home and everything in it that means so much to you. And knowing that even when the weather does its worst, you and your family are covered. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. In today's world, so many ordinary businesses pass themselves off as something special. But what's really special is what you're looking for. Don't settle for anything less. Inspiring women to be their own kind of beautiful. Offering a comfortable place to shop for quality products and excellent service. We have everything you need. Looking for fashion? We have top quality jewelry. For makeup? We have them. Black Opal, Revlon, Perfume, and much more. Lucky Cosmetics Hair and Beauty Supply Store. We carry an extensive collection of hair and beauty products to look your best. We are located at the Circus Taxi Stand, Bastyr St. Kitts. 
Call us at 869-466-7541. Meridian Medical Pharmacy is the best place to get your pharmaceutical products. We make filling prescriptions easy. Our well-stocked pharmacies are ready to serve you. Check us for medical supplies, skin products, supplements, and so much more. Ask about flu vaccines. At Meridian Medical Pharmacy, we are focused on offering a professional, personalized pharmacy experience. Our service is personal, compassionate, and friendly. Located at our state-of-the-art medical facilities at the corner of South Independent Square Street and Adlam Street, downtown Bastyr St. Kitts. And now we have a new branch on Frigate Bay Road in the Sugars Complex. Call 465-5096 and 465-3306 or email pharmacy at meridianmedcons.com. Visit Meridian Medical Pharmacy today and experience professional customer care and fast prescription fill-in service. Meridian, Meridian Medical, Medical Pharmacy. Pharmacy. Prime Minister and Minister of National Security Dr. Timothy Harris said the Team Unity government will continue to do all that it can to provide a more peaceful country but call on citizens and residents to do their part. The Minister of National Security was speaking during a press conference of the Royal St. Christopher Nevis Police Force held at the police training complex on 13th August, at which police displayed over 30 firearms that were turned in by gang members. But Harris disclosed also that the Team Unity Cabinet recently adopted a model for encouraging and assisting gang members to start a new life. I should advise that Cabinet recently approved a multicultural, multimodal, multi-system grassroots model which has been proposed by the Ministry of National Security as the structure for encouraging and assisting gang members to exit gangs. And this is largely part of the work of Dr. Godwin and Dr. McNichol and all the other members who are part of the team. So they have now provided us an operational structure that could help us better respond to some of the challenges and issues which we will have to deal with as we move forward. The idea of the multi-system model is that in order to eradicate social diseases like crime, Many relevant systems and critical persons have to be involved. The intention is to build community teams in different geographical areas around St. Kitts and Nevis, with each team consisting of community workers who are born and reside and or reside within the communities. People who are familiar with the happenings in a particular community. We want to draw upon our religious leaders, our community leaders, youth leaders in particular, and of course, our community policing officers will be critical to this. We will also open up to have representation from political parties willing and able to assist in this regard. The Minister of National Security said government will also continue to invest in social programs to help young people in the Federation. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. While denying that criminals are being paid to keep the peace and turn in some 30 guns last week, the People's Action Movement is not opposed to such an initiative. Both Deputy Prime Minister and uh, People's Action Movement leader Sean Richards and Chairman of the party John L. Powell say that if indeed gunmen were paid to turn in their guns, then so be it, if it means keeping the peace of the country. But if there was an incentive, look, you bring an illegal firearm and give your ex. I would support it because there's 30 less guns on the street. And when you look at the guns, there's some big machine gun, a shotgun and thing. I am happy. So if that is the case, continue to do it. Thank God we have a, a, a fiscally responsible government that can support such a notion but the fact of the matter is whether there's an amnesty program or not the work of the the, the the law enforcement authorities is reaping benefits we are seeing improvements look at the, the the crime rate look at the murder rate we now have 30 more 30 less guns off the street i can't see who who would want to 
to, to argue against that. But even if someone has been paid to turn in a firearm, whatever that person has been paid cannot be worth more than the life of any individual here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And the fact is that over the years, you have 20 something, 30 something persons being murdered a year. Families paying a price for it. The Federation paying a price for it. The health system paying a price for it. That you, can, you can't put a price on those things. Speaking on Freedom Radio Issues program, Mr. Richard said the opposition claims that the criminals are being paid to keep the peace are unfounded. Then you have persons who come and they make these allegations and they never can bring the evidence to support the allegations which are being made. They haven't even brought one single individual to substantiate the claim eh, that these persons are being paid to turn in the guns. The opposition have raised suspicions that the government is paying criminals to keep the peace, which has resulted in a drastic drop in homicides since mid-February. Opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas said on last Wednesday's edition of Issues radio program on Freedom Radio that if the government is paying the criminals, they should say so. Where is the accountability? Where is the transparency here? Why is it that this program is not being known to the general public as other programs are known, especially when it is to alleviate, to alleviate I should say, crime and criminal activity here in our country? We demand answers with regard to this particular program. And we need to know what is the budget. I'm Audrey Huey for SKN Newsline. Members of the Rastafari Nyabingi Theocracy Order on St. Kitts marched through the streets of Bastyr for their customary emancipation sensitization rally on Friday, August 23. This year, however, the event took a different turn as they clamored for the complete decriminalization of marijuana. The National Assembly recently passed the Drugs Prevention and Abatement of the Misuse and Abuse of Drugs Amendment Bill 2019, specifically geared towards the establishment of a marijuana industry and regulate the use of marijuana cannabis for medicinal and scientific, religious and recreational purposes in the Federation. However, members of the Rastafarian community have been up in arms as they say the amendments do not go far enough to allow for the use of marijuana for recreational and religious purposes. During the march, speakers take turns to speak on the PA system to decry what they deem as an unjust law that still punishes perpetrators caught using marijuana over a certain amount. Free the hub! Yeah man, people walking around feel like the hub is free. The hub is not free people. For this we are here today. The one thing the house and say they are mending the drug up. Say they be criminalizing ganja. Yet still, if you are found with 15 grams or less, you will still be ticketed, given community service, and still have to spend time in jail. Fire! That's injustice! The marchers got even more vociferous against the police officers as the march route was detoured down College Street behind government headquarters. They claim they are treated unfairly as other organizations are allowed to march in front government headquarters. We keep that in my life. Everybody, every march in St. Kitts, Chalmers March, Breast Cancer March, whatever march it is, they have the way to go on Kayan Street and come down Church Street. But because if you hear your heart, Babylon are discriminating. I will say fire! Wicked Nazi Babylon! Watch out there, discriminators, I and I! Ras Aya of the Rastafari Nyabingi Theocracy Order spoke to SK Newsline about Friday's march. And we are here for an annual rally and march to indicate to the administration that the act that they take from the judgment was hidden down 
is not a favorable act to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, but we're saying that we can have greater dialogue and see safeguard for people in a balance when it comes to the use of harm. Because we cannot continue watching ourselves being a supporter of the home and still being a victor of the home. So we say equal rights and justice time for one and all. That's why we are agitating that the administration realize they cannot continue making the laws and continue violating our constitutional rights. That is not to supported by the judgment that was stated in Meditern. So that's why we say it's time now to open up the dialogue better than how they indicated. And we say equal rights must be veiled. Not dictatorship, not authoritarianism. We say humanity are about to see ourselves extrayed in this commercial and economical stand when it comes to Ganja. So we can continue having ourselves suffocating under these laws that are not a way of our constitutional life. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Mark Williams, the director of the Marine Resources Department on St. Kitts, said no real solutions are in sight to deal with the annual invasion of the Sigasum seaweed. The seaweed blooms each year between Brazil and West Africa, but closer to Brazil, where the seaweed grows profusely, breaking off and floating northward through the Western Atlantic Ocean then into the Caribbean Sea. Huge amounts of the Sigasum seaweed have turned up on the shores of Caribbean countries, often affecting their tourism and fishing industries. Investigative and research indicators point to Brazil as a source of the problem. Mark Williams. Because of the nutrient runoff from the Brazil agricultural industry is causing the, the sargassum to bloom and grow faster than expected. So you know something go too fast, you're gonna have issues in terms of stability, so you just break off and then they move not. Mm -hmm. So um, that is the, the issue right now. We know that a number of countries has spent a lot, large sums of money um, trying to um, deal with this problem. Mm -hmm. But um, the, as of now, there is no real solution um, to this orgasm problem. The most common method of dealing with the seaweed everywhere in the Caribbean is by daily removal from the beaches. In some cases, tons of it is removed each day. A few years ago, there had been discussions about using the seaweed to make fertilizer, but this carries its own problem, said Williams. What you, what you see happening is that you have to wash it first, wash the soil from it first. And then you know, with the shortages of water that we are experiencing um, as of late, um, it is kind of challenging to wash, 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 wash it and still use the water for other um, portable sources. So um, the, I know a number of islands uh, had discussion, discussions in relation to the uses of the sargassum, but no one has found any real viable um, solution to the problem as yet. The, I think ideally um, we would have to sit down with Brazil to see well what what type of um, nutri um, fertilizers they're using to see how we could limit uh, how they how they can limit the the nutrient runoff into the water. I think that's that would be the start of the um, solution. When the sargassum seaweed was in St. Kitts and Nevis waters this year, peaking in April and May. Many fishers turned to other sources of income, such as construction. Williams said the large volume of the seaweed interferes with the outboard motors on the, their small fishing boats, resulting in dangerous situations for fishers. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. The Nevis Island Administration, NIA, will be paying $1,000 to four seasoned workers who have been temporarily displaced. Some 361 workers from the four season were displaced due to the temporary closure of the resort earlier this year to facilitate renovation works. The Premier said checks have been prepared by the Treasury and will be available at the Anglican Church Hall in Charlestown at any time between the hours of 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Wednesday, August 21st, to collect their checks. I am pleased to report 
that after some deliberations and under the guidance of the Ministry of Finance, the Cabinet took the decision to offer each of the affected Four Seasons workers a cash payment of $1,000 to assist in defraying back-to-school expenses for their children. We decided to delay the implementation of this decision until now, so as to offer the assistance at a time closest to the reopening of schools, when we expect that parents and guardians would be most challenged to find the necessary resources. I am therefore pleased to advise that all 361 workers affected by the closure of the Four Seasons, who have been receiving the 25% salary from the hotel, will be paid $1,000. Four Seasons, rather than laying off its workers, agreed to make gratuitous payment to each of those affected of 21% of their salaries during the period of closure. This they would receive regardless of whether they found temporary work in the interim. The Premier said that in an effort to cushion the financial strain on workers during this period, the government also waived any taxes payable on the 25% and persuaded Social Security to do likewise. He said the government also wrote to all the banks and other financial institutions on the island and requested that they grant some relief to workers who might have mortgages or other indebtedness to them during this difficult period. Staff from the Ministry of Finance and the Treasury will be on hand to assist you in ensuring that you receive this payment. I wish to record my gratitude to my cabinet colleagues who readily supported this idea of some further measure of relief to the affected Four Seasons workers. I record my thanks also to Permanent Secretary Colin Doerr and his team at the Ministry of Finance and at the Treasury. My government has always lived up to its commitment that our people matter most. We hope that this gesture to the affected workers at Four Seasons Resort will be beneficial to them and will assist in easing some of the pressure that they have been under. We look forward to their return to work on September 16, 2019 and to the promised reopening of the resort on 1st October 2019. However, the opposition Nevis Reformation Party is taking credit for forcing the Premier into his latest decision to pay $1,000 to the workers. In a post on his Facebook page Sunday, former NRP Senator Carlyle Powell said, quote, Relentless pressure from NRP has forced the Concerned Citizens Movement, CCM, to double the EC $500 monthly payment for the Four Season Resort workers to $1,000 monthly, end quote. The opposition has repeatedly called for the NIA to provide some assistance to the workers as the 25% payment from Four Season was not enough to sustain them during the closure. I am Namayam Bamganalo for SKN Newsline. For all your printing needs at top-notch quality, go, go to, to Digital, Digital Print, Print Plus, Plus, located on Princess Street, Bass, Deer, St. Kitts. At Digital Print Plus, you get the best in business cards, letterheads, envelopes, wristbands, tent cards, rack cards, flyers, brochures, logo designs, posters, photos, architectural designs, 3D renderings, and so much more. Digital Print Plus gives you the best quality at competitive prices. Contact us at 767-7468 or email digitalprintskn at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook at Digital Print SKN. Digital, Digital Print, Print Plus, Plus for, for all, all your printing, printing needs at the, the best quality. Online radio has never been this great. It's Voice of the Caribbean Radio at voiceofthecaribbean.net. Tune in for Caribbean music and programs, news, sports, entertainment, vibrant discussions, and much more. Tune into programs like Get Up Mornings with Carl D. Springett, live on weekday mornings. Let's Talk St. Kitts and Nevis with Andre Huey. The Caribbean News Hour and The Quiet Storm with Magic Man. Tune into great music to inspire you each day, only on Voice of the Caribbean Radio, at www.voiceofthecaribbean.net or on our Android mobile app in the Google Play Store. Just search Voice of the Caribbean. We're also on TuneIn Radio. Voice of the Caribbean Radio. 
reaching the Caribbean and beyond. Check our website for program listings. We at Multigraphics are dedicated to providing quality products and service to our customers. Our team takes pride in the craftsmanship and is passionate about its work. Every job, large or small, is important. Most of our customers come to us through referrals. That's because our number one priority is service. We serve a wide variety of customers, such as restaurants, retail stores, manufacturers, trucking companies, and many more. Our capabilities include design, production, and installation. How can we help? We are located at Bird Rock at the Woods Wright Compound. Call us at 869-763-1511 or 784-491-7599. Multigraphics. Now you can have SK Newsline on the go. Introducing SK Newsline Android mobile app. Search SK Newsline in the Google Play Store. Download the app free and stay up to date with TV news in St. Kitts and Nevis in the palm of your hands. With this app, you can watch your news reports, watch our live news feed on SK Newsline TV, engage with us and other app users in the chat room, look at our special features, send us news tips, and call us directly. It's, it's news, news on, on the go. go. The SK Newsline Android mobile app. Download, Download it free, free today. today. Raheem Francis, the village superstars footballer who was stabbed and hospitalized recently, has received a welcome boost from the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association, the SKNFA. On Thursday, President of the SKNFA, Anthony Johnson, made a presentation of $8,400 to his family to defray the costs of medical expenses incurred as a result of the incident. The presentation took place inside Mr. Johnson's law office in the Sands Complex, Bastyr. Mr. Johnson, during the brief presentation, said the Sabin incident has taken a toll on Raheem's family and the football fraternity, hence the reason he decided to make the donation. As I believe the entire country is aware, Mr. Raheem Francis underwent a very, very unfortunate incident a few months ago where he was stabbed and was very much in danger of losing his life. Raheem that we are aware as well is uh, one of our most outstanding young footballers has represented the Singles Nevis at the various youth levels and even recently at the senior level. And so the incident has, I think, taken a very serious toll, not only on Raheem, his family, his club, but the entire football fraternity. And so we are fortunate, however, that Raheem is still with us today and is recovering. Um, but of course, the incident would have incurred considerable expenses um, on Raheem and his family. And so it is in that regard that I have decided to make a donation towards uh, the medical expenses of Raheem in the sum of 8400 Dollars and so I wish to present the check to Raheem and his family. Raheem's mother, Jacintha Lotoya Williams, expressed gratitude for the donation. Well, as his mom, too, I like to thank Johnson for all the help and everyone who came out and supported him in any way. I really, really appreciate it and really grateful that he's here with us. Every day for him, I still look there for him and thanks for everything. Also in handed to receive the donation was president of the Rams Village Superstars Football Club, Ken Quealy. Rams Superstars, Raheem and his family, we just want to thank Mr. Johnson and the SKNFA for making a serious contribution towards pipe and medical bills and hope it's on the road to recovery for Raheem in the future. Raheem was stabbed in April of this year by a player from the Connery Football Club after a match involving both teams. He was hospitalized and has since been discharged to complete his recovery. Mr. Johnson noted that the payments for his medical bills from this donation have already been made to the health service providers. The 
The St. Kitts Nevis Patriots edged the Premier 11 by one run in their annual exhibition match at the E.T. Bullet Park in Charlestown, Nevis on Thursday. Division cricket fans came out in their numbers to cheer on their home side and get an up-close and personal look at the Patriots as they get ready to embark on the 2019 Caribbean Premier League CPL season. Prior to the match, newly appointed Patriots captain Carlos Bradway said it's always a pleasure for him to play on Nevis and for him, the Federation is a second home. Um, it's always good to come to Nevis. Um, it gives the boys from Nevis a good chance to rub shoulders with some of the more seasoned professionals in the Caribbean. And you know, maybe someday we'll find one of the guys being handpicked from this game to actually represent the Patriots. Um, so it's good that you know we can play against the hometown boys and also bring the, the franchise and the cricket to Nevis as well. Brathwaite also said he is looking forward to the season and to be captain in the SKN Patriots. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, St. Kitts is like my second home, to be fair. I've always enjoyed playing for the franchise and I have the opportunity and the privilege to lead it. So we're looking forward to a good season. We've got a bunch of good, young, talented cricketers. Um, so we just want to go there, express ourselves, um, play with bundles of energy, express ourselves as best as we could, play the best cricket possible. And if we win more games than not, we go through the top four. That's the first goal. And then once we get in the final four, anything is possible. But we eventually want to win the tournament. And we can only do that by doing the small things right consistently. Premier 11's captain Delvin Phillips said prior to the match that this game serves as an opportunity for Nivision players to impress and possibly get a call for the Patriots next season. The 11 we have here, we, we have to come and try and play the hard because you never know. One of the guys might get injured and if you perform here, you could just get a simple call up. So as simple as you think this game is, once you perform, I think you could get a little do. Meanwhile, Nevis Minister of Sports... Eric Evelyn said this exhibition match means a lot to Nivision cricket fans and it's a precursor to the Patriots season. Well, I think it's very important to have this kind of exhibition match here in Nevis. Of course, um, this match, I believe, is a way of kind of um, drumming up support for the CPL games that are coming up. And of course, a number of the games will be played in St. Kitts. And so this match gives us an opportunity here on Nevis to um, kind of pique our interest. It gives us an opportunity to see firsthand some of the players who will be playing on the um, St. Kitts Nevis Patriots team. And of course, we are always very anxious as to know who the players are what their capability is and it gives our players our local players in St. Kitts and Nevis who will be a part of the Premier's 11 it gives them that opportunity to play with these some of these international and regional players and it gives them an opportunity to be competitive as well and so I believe this game is extremely important it's a is a very important for the players the um, members of the Patriots team to get some well-needed practice and exposure it's important to the members of the Premier's 11 to give them that exposure to the St. Kitts Nevis Patriots team as well and it's very important to to the public here on Nevis, so at least we could get a, an opportunity to start seeing some of what the talent that the members of the St. Kitts Nevis Patriots team has to offer. He too, like Adelvin Phillip, believes the game represents opportunities for local players. So the persons who have been selected to the Premier's 11, they're going to be putting their best foot forward. I believe they're going to be very competitive because I know that normally once these kind of exhibition games are played, there are always persons there with an extra eye to look out to spot any talent that they think can go to the next level. And who knows, there might be some persons, some players who will be in the Premier's 11 who next year might make it to the Patriots team or maybe not even the Patriots to another team in the CPL as well. Patriots made 127 for 7 in 20 overs while the Premier's 11 made 126 for 6 in their allotted 20 overs. Brathway top scored for the Patriots with 45 runs, hitting 3 4s and 2 6s in the process. Premier 11's captain Adelvin Phillip top scored for his team with 39 runs. Terence Ward on 29 and Mikael Louis on 24. Alzari Joseph picked up two wickets for 19 for the Patriots. Quinton Botswain and Elvin Berridge each picked up two wickets for 28 and 9 runs respectively. The Patriots prepare to head to Antigua and Barbuda for another exhibition match at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium before departing for Trinidad and Tobago for their first match of the CPL season against the Trinbago Knight Riders. Parliamentary representative of constituency number three, Conris Maynard, said a Labour government will build a new and modern hospital to meet the population needs of St. Kitts and Nevis. Speaking at a Labour Party press conference on Wednesday, 28 August, Maynard said the healthcare system is under enormous stress 
with issues surrounding the nurses, doctors, and the availability of critical medicines. Our hospitals and health centers have been understaffed and under-resourced. No gauze, no insulin, no medication, no clean sheets, no toilet paper. Outpatient waiting times have increased astronomically. The confidence in our healthcare system has plummeted as a result of the unnecessary deaths and the incidence of unsuccessful treatment being recorded at our hospitals. The system has been rocked, as you know, by the stem cell scandal and the herpes, herpes vaccine scandal. The late Joseph Nathaniel France, hailing from my own constituency, would be turning in his grave to see the state of our healthcare system. The general hospital that has been named after him has been reduced to a place where people go to die, not a place where people go to live. A new Labour Party administration first and foremost will deliver a brand new state-of-the-art general hospital. Full stop. Maynard says such a facility will offer MRI services among others. Glenn Bach for SKN Newsline. The 2019 edition of the Latin Festival will feature a combination of music and cuisine of Latin America. At a press conference recently hosted by the Latin Festival Committee at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort, Chairman Adelic Rodriguez gave an insight into the artists that will be coming for this year's Latin Fiesta. The artists for this year, we have Maruchi, as you see in the, in the, in the video, that is a reggaeton artist from Puerto Rico. It's a rising star signed by one of the most respectable um, labels in the industry called Isco. He will bring in his charisma and all the, the energy for, for his performance with the reggaeton beat. So prepare your dancing shoes because he's going to be on fire. We have Victor y la Sonora San Juanera, also from Puerto Rico. It's a well-known salsa band with very, very talented musicians that will give us the salsa move and beat that we need just to put ourselves there. We have Pressure Boss Pipe from the U.S. Virgin Island, well-known reggae artist with, that just won the, 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 um, the road match with um, his song, his new hit, that is Got It and Done, that he's a reggae artist, but he's so versatile that he just come up with a soccer, a soccer song, and he won the carnival, um, so, uh, the, the soccer monarch and the road match. And everybody was like, come on, Pipe, how you can come out from reggae and just win over everybody? So that's how it is. And he's so excited. He has already sent videos, so excited to come to Senke. He said that lately he's not been invited, so he's very proud that Latin Fiesta, you know, contact him and he's, he's coming, so joy with us. He from the Dominican Republic. He is so popular, so popular that I am sure that many of the Dominicans that reside in Senge never been able to see him performing in his own country. So it's about an opportunity that you cannot miss. He is the person that sings bachata and merengue, so you can dance, but you can listen as well because his music is about love. All his music, even though you don't understand what he's saying, you will feel like, wow, whatever he's saying, I feel it. Mr. Rodriguez also disclosed a special addition to this year's festival involving cuisine. This year, our VIP is going to be totally, totally different. We have a new layout with, with, to, to, to create a, a new experience. And we bring in, as you see in the video, Executive Chef Rosa from Puerto Rico. As you see in the video, early this year, he was participating against one of the top, top chefs in the world in this famous gay grocery game from the Food, food um, Network channel. Meanwhile, founder of the Latin Festival, 
Jose Rosa, spoke about how the Latin festival has created a niche on the entertainment calendar of St. Kitts and Nevis. Our, our African heritage is something that is in a part of our music, part of our food, part of our, our arts in every, in every expression. And I think we always should use that as a common link, no matter what language you speak. Could be Dutch, could be, could be French, could be Spanish, and English. Because that common link is something that we carry because all the people that came to the Caribbean from, from our ancestors, the heritage that we carry, leave, left here a lot of things that, that are important for all of us in the Caribbean. If you, if you listen to the music of, of salsa, or calixo, or merengue, you see very common sounds there between the different, the, the different rings. Also speaking at the press conference was Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Carleen Henry Morton. Ten years um, of, of celebrating your heritage, your culture, your roots, and even though you live here on St. Kitts, you have integrated with us. It is good to see that you have not forgotten um, your people, you know, your history, your culture, your heritage, and you're willing to share it with us here on St. Kitts. Um, the Ministry of Tourism, where we are concerned, we are always very, very happy whenever there are activities such as this, because the benefits cannot be denied. Latin Festival will be hosted in October 2019, with a Latin Fiesta slated for October 27th at the Frigate Bay Lawns. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline.